Hi friends, my name is Nilesh. In this video, I am going to show you how to clear the Certified Kubernetes Application Developer Test CKD. I recently cleared this test just a couple of days back and the memories of this test is quite fresh in my mind. So I thought of sharing my experience and some of the tips uh, that you can use to clear this exam. So let's get started by looking at uh, what this exam is all about and uh, how to uh, address this or how to tackle it. Here I've shown you the exam curriculum. So it is basically divided into five broad categories, starting with the application design, then application deployment, uh, application observability, maintenance, uh, environment configuration, security, and services and networking. And each of these topics carries a different weightage with the application environment, configuration, and security being the highest, which is 25%, and uh, the rest are spread across. So who is this test targeting for? So this test is designed by the Cloud Native Foundation along with the uh, Linux Foundation. So CNCF and Linux Foundation uh, built this test or they developed this test. This is meant for uh, people who are working with Kubernetes. So basically uh, developers or engineers who work with uh, Kubernetes as a environment or as application deployment platform and it tries to demonstrate how you can design, build, and deploy uh, cloud native applications uh, on Kubernetes. So uh, I've given the link here at the bottom, and I'll also provide this link in the description of the video if you want to find out more details about the course curriculum or the exam curriculum. The actual exam has a time limit of two hours, and the passing percentage is 66%. Uh, That's the minimum score. Once you clear the exam, it's valid for three years. And uh, in case you're not able to clear it on the first attempt, you can take one free retake with this exam. Uh, this is purely a hands-on test. There are no multiple choice questions and you are given a live Kubernetes environment. In fact, there are uh, six different clusters with different configurations, with uh, different nodes, different uh, network plugins installed and uh, you are supposed to work with those six different environments, live environments, and you have to perform tasks uh, which are related to these different topics which I mentioned here. So uh, let's get started by looking at some of the resources which uh, you can use to prepare for this exam. I'll start with the ones which uh, I use myself and uh, I found this from the earlier references when I was looking for help on the uh, exam preparation. So first and foremost is obviously the Kubernetes docs itself. Uh, we can refer to these documents and the documentation as part of the test. It's like an open book test where uh, you are allowed to open one extra window apart from your test uh, browser window and you can refer to this. So uh, I've given a top level links here like the top level uh, docs links and uh, there are a couple of other things like the uh, kubectl kube control or kube control, whatever you want to call that the client which is used to uh, communicate with the kubectl or uh, with the kubernetes uh, it's a cheat sheet which gives you a sort of commands for all kinds of uh, things you can do uh, with kubernetes the task is a very handy reference and let's see if we can open it here Let me switch to the browser and uh, these tasks they are very uh, useful uh, because they give you like the imperative commands which are required for performing different operations so i'll use uh, the uh, bookmarks that i've created and uh, directly open this task from there so uh, all the kind of operations that can be done with the uh, kubernetes cluster they are listed down uh, in this uh, set of tasks and uh, they are really uh, helpful in uh, you can go through like uh, for a CK or CKD, CKS, all these exams, you can refer to this task. There is also uh, another one which is uh, really useful, the reference talks. So along with the task, I would say uh, keep the bookmark for the reference talks which will allow you to quickly uh, navigate to the task at hand and uh, you can uh, find the imperative command here 
to quickly create resources because there is a time constraint of two hours you want to be able to uh, create these resources very quickly instead of looking at the detailed documentation so uh, go through this and i suggest that when you practice uh, use this as uh, your uh, one of the tool to get familiar with kubernetes in terms of e-learning uh, if you have looked at my previous video for the CK, the Kubernetes uh, Certified Kubernetes Administrator exam, I was referring to the Linux Foundation course, uh, e-learning course as my primary reference. But when it came to CKID, I referred for uh, two different e-learning resources. One is obviously the Linux Foundation course on CKID. I had this combined package of the uh, e-learning course as well as the exam, uh, which I had taken during the uh, Thanksgiving uh, with discount. So I refer to that and there is also this course by Umshad Mohammed on the uh, Udemy platform. Uh, this comes with a practice test. So I would suggest that if you are a beginner or intermediate uh, level in terms of your learning with Kubernetes or experience with Kubernetes, this course is really good, highly recommended. Uh, you can see that it has got 4.7 uh, stars on Udemy. Uh, there are so many uh, students who have taken up this course and it is very detailed. I find it very useful, especially the uh, exercises which comes after every module or a set of modules. And then there is also the practice test which comes with this course. So I recommend using one of these resources to prepare. Uh, the test itself is uh, at this point of time uh, 375 uh, US dollars and if you buy the bundle uh, with the test and the learning course from Linux Academy it is around 575. Uh, you can get this in discount if you get a discount coupon or during some uh, Thanksgiving or other kind of uh, opportunities. Then I also referred to some of the uh, other GitHub repositories or uh, other references. Uh, there were a couple of them which I found useful. I used the Danny Zhang's kubectl cheat sheet during my uh, CKA test preparation as well. Uh, Ahmed Al Palkan, the creator of uh, UbenX and kubectl tools, he has a very good uh, repository which explains in detail the network policies which is one of the concept uh, quite fundamental to this CKD test. You are not supposed to create network policies, but you're supposed to understand. And uh, in fact, in my test, I got a question related to the network policies to use the pre-created network policy. So this is a quite uh, handy uh, repository. Then there are CKD exercises and CKD resources, which I would like to show you now. So, uh, CKD exercises is a collection of uh, different, uh, sorry, not the block, I want to look at the GitHub repo. So uh, CKD exercises gives you uh, sort of uh, exercises related to different uh, kind of uh, operations which are required to be done as part of this test and they also provide you the solution. So. Uh, this is quite an active repository. It has been there for quite a few years and people have contributed to this. Uh, this is quite useful. I found it really good. Then there is the CKD resources, another uh, repository. This has links to other repositories as well and the exam notes, practice questions and things like that. So if you are looking for like a collection of resources, I recommend to refer to this as well. And then as part of my learning, I created a CKD exam prep as well, where uh, one of the things I did was to create a multi-node cluster on Microsoft Azure. And I have the steps documented here. So in case you want to start from building your own cluster and then uh, work with that cluster, you can find this useful. I have also added some references and the links that I've used in this repository. It's available. So those were the GitHub repositories. Then I also referred to uh, some of the online resources or blogs. So uh, this is again, not just specific to CKD, but in general, if you are preparing for any of the uh, Kubernetes related tests, uh, you can use this how to be fast with kubectl. 
uh, because again uh, as i keep saying time is a constraint here you have to perform a set of tasks and you need to be able to do it very quickly so you should know how to work fast with uh, kubectl kube control or kube cuttle uh, there is the ckd practical challenges series uh, i personally found again this one is very useful let me show you that So this is like a weekly challenge and uh, it tries to cover again things like creating pods, service migration, network policies, the sidecars, security context, environment variables uh, in detail. I mean, you have a question, you have a scenario, you have a solution and all the steps that are required to answer this question or that problem statement. And uh, then there is the uh, kubectl uh, codefresh has provided a uh, cheat sheet. So I'll provide the links to these uh, different resources in the uh, description of this video so that you find it handy uh, in case you are referring to this in future. Now coming to the tips, how do you prepare for the exam? And uh, this I'll try to cover in two sections. One which is before the exam and the second one during the exam itself, how you can uh, be a more uh, productive and how you can uh, reduce your stress levels and how you can handle the exam more efficiently. So the first thing before the exam or when you're preparing for the exam is obviously to watch out for the discount. You don't want to pay 100% of the price. Discounts are available uh, like Black Friday, Cyber Monday. You might find discounts during festival times like Christmas, New Year, maybe Deepavali, Eid. All these occasions you might find these discounts available. So look out for that and uh, get those discounts uh, the uh, second thing is be good with the imperative commands you have to be really efficient with the kubectl commands and the options here i've given a screenshot of the uh, editor cheat sheet vi or bim you need to learn the basics of uh, vi or nano editor because it's a linux environment if you are coming from a windows background like me uh, I'm not very familiar with Linux commands or Linux editors, but you have to be really uh, handy. You need to know, you have to be hands-on in terms of editing the resources and that is where you have to use one of these editors. So this cheat sheet, it helps, uh, it, it personally helped me to understand uh, how to be efficient with uh, VI editor, how to navigate instead of uh, going line by line, how to search for a particular uh, text, how to go to a line, how to delete number of lines, how to paste efficiently and things like that. It's basically to reduce the number of keystrokes and to get your tasks done efficiently and as quickly as possible. So uh, I found this cheat sheet useful and I'm sure if you are new to uh, VI, you will also find it useful. Anyone who has cleared, let's say CK, CKS or CK edit test will tell you that you have to practice quite a lot. And practice, practice, practice is the thing that you will hear anyone who has cleared this test tell you repeatedly and I am not an exception to this. I will stress that you have to practice it to know what you are doing, uh, especially when it comes to things like debugging. Uh, there is a lot of uh, questions in this test which are related to identifying problems with your deployment services, replica sets and things like that. Uh, labels. If you don't know how different things link together, uh, you will be just spending time putting here and there and that's not uh, very efficient. You will not be able to clear the exam if you uh, don't know how to quickly find out where the problem lies and how to resolve it. So you have to uh, practice quite a lot. Uh, bookmark specific links. I mentioned about this in the exam preparation video for CK exam as well and I will again quickly demonstrate what I mean by this. Uh, the documentation of Kubernetes is quite vast and uh, you have a lot of documents which are quite lengthy in nature and you want to find out uh, the exact location which you need to refer to. So in this case, I am taking this example for specifying the memory and request limits. So in my uh, bookmarks if you see I have uh, like in terms of design or in terms of 
deployments, I have organized them into subfolders. And let's say I want to go into seeing how to assign the resources, CPU resources to a container. Now, this particular document uh, in itself quite be, uh, might be quite lengthy. Uh, you can see it from the length of the document here, but uh, I'm interested in knowing exactly how to uh, specify this in a YAML file. And all that I need is this code snippet. So I know it uh, resides somewhere in this document. Instead of referring or bookmarking uh, the top level page, it would be quite useful uh, to bookmark the very specific section that you were interested in so that it is uh, quite easy. You can directly go to that location, pick up the stuff, uh, copy paste and uh, put it in your uh, answer instead of just searching for it and instead of uh, looking for information this becomes quite useful and it saves you quite a lot of amount of time so let's go back to the presentation the next thing is uh, the practice exam once you have done all these things let's say you are comfortable now you are familiar with all the concepts you have done enough practice you are comfortable with the editors you can take up the practice test if you subscribe to the uh, Munshad Mohammed course on Udemy uh, you will get uh, the practice test as part of that course uh, that is one option the other option is if uh, you are registering not if now when you register for the CKA or CKAD exams uh, since June 2021 uh, you are allowed to take two practice tests with killer SH and uh, once you activate the environment, it's available for 36 hours. You get the same test in both the, or you get the same questions in both the attempts. Uh, but uh, these questions are slightly tougher compared to the actual test. And the environment is open for 36 hours. So uh, even if you're not able to complete the test, let's say in two hours, uh, you have still have the environment where you can practice beyond the two hours uh, within that 36 hours period. Uh, you can access that particular sandbox and uh, you are also provided a solution, a detailed explanation uh, to the questions and how to answer those questions. So this one is definitely, uh, at least you should try it once in my opinion. Now, uh, during the exam, uh, this one again I find that many people they are uh, quite well prepared when it comes to preparing and they make a lot of efforts but then uh, at the time of exam itself even after going through all of these preparations you find that uh, people get stressed out and uh, because of the time constraints you might lose out on uh, some of the scoring opportunities. So some of the tips that I uh, used or so I followed and I would like to share with you is use external monitors. You are allowed to use uh, external devices like uh, one monitor or even multiple monitors. Uh, whatever number of monitors you are using, you have to share it with the proctor. You will have to share all your screens. So uh, you can use external monitor. Uh, it is recommended if you have a a big thing nowadays most of us are working from home and uh, i'm sure you might have a setup which allows you to have an external monitor which is slightly bigger than let's say a constrained 14 inch or 13 inch uh, screen of your laptop uh, when you are using external monitor limit the screen switching i had this uh, friend of mine who shared his experience that he was using an external monitor and he was using his laptop as well and at times he spent time looking at both the screens and it took a bit of time for him to get used to that during the exam situation and uh, he wasted in his opinion some amount of time doing this so instead of this try to reduce the screen switching or uh, limit the time if you can between switching uh, between your primary monitor and the secondary one or the external one so i would like to share with you the uh, setup that I had during the exam. This one I had shared during my earlier video as well for the CK exam. So I have my uh, laptop and the widescreen 49 inches monitor which I split into two. So as I said you are allowed to open two windows. One is your exam window where you are submitting all your answers in the browser and 
another browser which is the reference your uh, kubernetes documentation can be opened up so i split the screen exactly into two halves one half was used for the exam and the second half was used for the documentation if you don't have such a big screen but let's say you have a smaller 27 inches or 32 inches screen you can still split that in the same screen you don't need 100 percent of the screen estate uh, you can split it by let's say 25 percent 75 percent or 50 50 and uh, you can limit the screen time that is uh, one thing i would recommend if you can do that uh, you are also allowed to use external keyboard and mouse so if you are using external screen and uh, your laptop is connected to the screen if you are doing everything on the laptop again it might be uh, not so convenient so if you have the privilege of using external keyboard and mouse uh, that would be quite handy as well in my opinion uh, enable the kubectl auto completion in most cases this is enabled but in case your test environment does not have it enabled the kubectl cheat sheet document in the documentation of uh, Kubernetes has a small code snippet which shows you how to enable the kubectl auto completion. This will save you some amount of time looking for resources and you can just type, let's say you have a pod named Nginx, you can just type n and tab and it will complete the name. Uh, and same goes for other resources as well. You uh, can also create aliases. Uh, what I did was before starting the test, I put down a list of the aliases that I want to use. So K is the most frequently used alias for kubectl, but you can also create other aliases like uh, KG for kget. If you are getting uh, the uh, pods, for example, you can use uh, kgpu, kget pods. Also use the short forms like instead of pods or nodes, you can use po and no as the resource names. So later on, I'll show you the list of aliases which I use, but this you can do before starting the test. So what I did was I had this, all the aliases in Notepad++ created beforehand. I copied it before starting my exam and then in the exam, in the Notepad feature of exam, I pasted them. So instead of remembering all of those, I could just create them beforehand. Same thing goes for the uh, VI editors uh, settings. When you copy and paste from Kubernetes documentation, you might have to indent the contents of your code snippet. So in that case, again, you have to set some settings for the web, which again, I'll show you in a short while. So all this I had kept uh, ready beforehand and I just updated my bash profile and the uh, VI profile using those settings. Next is some tips related to time management and uh, this is where i would like to spend most of my time because i feel uh, i cleared this test on the second attempt and the first time i spent too much time uh, trying to do things manually and i lost a bit of time there and that is where i could not uh, answer all the questions within the stipulated amount of time so you have to be good with the use of imperative commands for me this was the huge time saver the second time around because uh, if you look at the documentation and if you copy the uh, YAML code snippets from there, you will have to make a lot of changes when you paste it and you spend a lot of time copying and pasting. Instead of that, you can use the imperative command to create whatever resources are required. Let's say a pod, a deployment, a replica set or whatever is requested as part of the task. And you can use these imperative commands to quickly generate the YAML. You can use uh, flags like dry run to see what YAML would be generated. You can output that to a text file and uh, then you can apply those things. So to me, this is a huge time saver and you should be really familiar with how to use those imperative commands to generate uh, resources. Uh, use the copy feature instead of typing. So uh, in your questions, you will have specific needs to create resources with exactly same name. They should have a specific label. Uh, they should be created in a specific namespace and things like that. So instead of trying to type those uh, resource names or object names, uh, copy them. You can just click and uh, the test environment is enabled with a copy feature once you click on a particular 
resource name or uh, whatever is the tag. You can also use the notepad feature in the exam to note things. So maybe uh, you have to use a similar set of commands on different uh, questions. So you can put those commands or commonly used commands on the uh, notepad or if you want to remember something to come back later. There is a flag feature in the test where you can flag a question and come back to it later. Uh, but along with the flag, maybe you want to uh, look for some specific information when you come back. So those kind of things you can use notepad to make a note of. Uh, then coming back to the flag questions. So uh, the last two tips related to time management are related to this. Uh, there are 17 questions in the test and compared to CK where I found that many of the questions were quite straightforward. Uh, CKAD, the questions are lengthy and on an average you will have at least two to three tasks to create per uh, question so you have to complete uh, more than i would say 45 to 60 different tasks or subtasks to answer this test and you have two hours to do all this so don't spend too much time on a single question i would suggest that a maximum of five to six minutes on an average is what you should be spending per question Anytime you feel like you are spending more than this, I suggest that you flag that question and move on. And again, it's uh, not very important to answer all the questions in a way that uh, you don't have to get 100% of the answer correct. Let's say there are six or seven tasks to be completed and you manage to complete six tasks, but you are unable to complete one task. You would still get the score, a partial score for that particular question so in that sense i highly recommend that you attempt each and every question and each and every subtask of that question so you give yourself every opportunity to score as much as possible by answering all those tasks and uh, finally don't forget to verify your solution after completing the task i almost missed out on this during one of the question where uh, you had to create a particular uh, manifest file and that manifest file had to be created in a specific location so what i was doing during the test was to put a prefix of the question number like let's say five and then the type of object which has to be created let's say deployment and i would create the yaml file so let's say i had a yaml file named five deployment.yaml uh, i applied that and my environment was or my task was uh, complete I had the deployment uh, available in the environment, but then the ask of the question was to save that deployment file in a specific location. I was almost about to miss that part. So uh, don't forget to do these kind of things that after you complete the task, verify the solution and make sure that uh, you are putting resources in the right place where they are requested as part of the question. Now, coming back to the aliases, which I mentioned earlier, uh, these are some of the aliases I had put in the batch profile. Uh, first one is uh, CLS or clear to clear the screen. Uh, that's like a common one I have when I work with the terminal, be it Windows terminal or Linux. So I'm quite comfortable or uh, I'm quite used to having a clear screen. After doing some task, I would like to see my uh, screen to be clear. So I put that as the first alias. Then uh, related to getting the resources like uh, k get is uh, k is already aliased so you don't have to alias k for uh, kubectl in case it is not there please feel free to add uh, but the other ones are related to getting resources quite quickly and as i said instead of putting the complete resource name like pods or nodes use the short form po no uh, config map for example instead of typing whole config map you can just say cm and uh, maybe i'll do a short video later on how to find out those short names for the resources and how to use them uh, then uh, k describe because uh, you will have situations where you will have to find out about resources so i had the describe alias there and finally uh, two aliases one for applying the manifest files and the other one for delete Along with this, I also put a couple of export statements which are quite handy to do the things uh, efficiently. 
first one is to do a dry run and generate a yaml output so output as yaml and dry run as client and then also to force delete the resources you don't want to spend time waiting for the resources to be deleted so there is this force flag and grace period at zero so i put them also in my bash profile similarly for the vi editor i set up some default settings uh, which helps me when i paste the code from the manifest files or from kubernetes documentation to indent and to align uh, this is related to the shift with devstop and expanding the tabs so with that i come to the end of this uh, session i uh, hope you found it useful here i'm sharing the uh, certificate that i received from uh, cncf cloud native foundation along with the uh, certificate number so in case you want to verify this you can go to the link at the bottom there uh, trainings.linuxfoundation.org certification and verify using my certificate number i hope the video was useful uh, in case you find this useful please hit the like button subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends uh, happy new year and thanks for watching this video